You have just stumbled into Noir Alley, and there's no going back now. I'm Eddie Muller, your host, but not your bodyguard. Don't expect me to protect you from the crooks or the cops. And you've got good reason to be afraid of both of them in this week's offering, Crime Wave from 1954. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and declare that of all the movies I've presented so far in Noir Alley, this might be the simplest. A gang of hard cases bust out of the joint and try to persuade their old wheel man into joining them for another bank job. And when our reformed hero refuses, they take him and his wife hostage. That's pretty much it. Crime movies don't get much more basic than this. Now, amazingly, it took five writers to create this thing. Brothers John and Ward Hawkins wrote the original story for the Saturday Evening Post. An adaptation was done by Bernard Gordon and Richard Wormser, and Crane Wilbur turned in the final script. Now, Wilbur was a fascinating character. He'd been writing, directing, and acting in silent pictures for years, when in the 1920s, he became something of a matinee idol, starring opposite Pearl White in the popular serial The Perils of Pauline. He may have even inspired his cousin to try acting, Tyrone Power. But in the 1930s, Wilbur began specializing in crime movies, especially prison pictures, writing things like Alcatraz Island, Over the Wall, and Blackwell's Island. And by the late 40s, his métier was the fact-based crime film. He supplied original stories for He Walked by Night, Canyon City, and The Phoenix City Story, among many others. Every other one, it seemed, a prison picture. If Wilbur's work lacked originality, he tried to compensate with authenticity. And on that score, he had the perfect collaborator in director Andre de Toth. The simplicity of a story is what attracted de Toth. He wanted to direct scenes you've watched dozens of times before because he believed his style could reveal intrinsic truths that were missing in most Hollywood films. De Toth was one of numerous Hungarian emigres who made a major impact in Hollywood. But unlike his countryman Michael Curtiz, who'd become the top line director at Warner Brothers in the 30s and 40s, De Toth worked mostly as a freelancer, partly because of his restless independent spirit and partly because he was a bullheaded contrarian. De Toth was determined to prove, even with the most meager material, that he knew a better way to make movies. Crime Wave is a perfect example. From the very beginning, there's something different about what should be a routine movie, a simple gas station holdup is directed with an edginess and sense of reality that is strikingly different from most pictures of the period. Working with cameraman Burt Glennon, we showed his terrific work on Red Light earlier this year, de Toth shot virtually all of Crime Wave on actual locations around Los Angeles, combining the mysterious shadows of classic noir with a cinema verite style that was still years away from being de rigueur for this type of movie. In fact, de Toth made this film in late 1952 under the title, The City is Dark. And despite it being as vicious and vigorous as any crime picture of the decade, Warner Brothers was unimpressed and shelved it for a couple of years, apparently out of spite. You see, the studio thought this would have been a good story in which to team Humphrey Bogart and Ava Gardner. But de Toth vehemently protested knowing that with big stars, he'd have the studio breathing down his neck and he'd lose the authenticity he craved. So de Toth got the actors he wanted, but in the process lost a big chunk of the budget and was giving a shooting schedule of less than two weeks. Precisely the kind of challenge he relished as a director. This is a guy who once in a while could turn the pedestrian into something close to perfection. Now, for the pivotal role of Lieutenant Sims, de Toth cast Sterling Hayden, and few directors have ever used the actor's size to better advantage. Sims is a steamroller with a shield, an unstoppable example of authority run amok, and de Toth designed all the interiors to be intentionally cramped and low ceiling to play up Hayden's bull-in-a-china-shop physicality. 
and he took away the actor's pack-a-day habit, not allowing him to smoke on screen, which ensured an extra level of grumpy hostility in the actor's performance. I love to smoke cigarettes, but the doctors say I can't have them. So what do I do? I chew toothpicks. Tons of them. <laughs> now, if you've seen this movie on DVD, maybe you've heard the audio track I did for it with writer James Elroy. Crime Wave is one of Elroy's favorites. And in that commentary, he reveals that Sterling Hayden was the model for the character of vengeful cop Bud White in his classic L.A. Confidential. So, James, if you're watching, this Bud's for you. Okay, we're getting the old gang back together, and they are a sordid bunch with criminal records I'll reveal once this caper is played out. Right now, brace yourself for a 73-minute crime wave. 